Welcome to Mr. V Teaching Math. In this session, we're going to be looking at stem and leaf plots. This is a stem and leaf plot. It is a way of organizing some data, something like this set of data, a group of numbers. It might be someone's ages or any other kind of data. Here's the way a stem and leaf plot works. It's called a stem and leaf because there's this section, which is sort of like the trunk of a tree. And these are the leaves. The stem is the tens, and each of these are the ones. So this number is not a three. This is twenty-three. This is twenty-four and twenty-five. Forty-six, forty-seven, forty-nine, two forty-nines actually. This for instance, there's no tens, this would just be a plain seven. Up here, this is 100, 5. Now notice here, I have a, 40, a 74 and a 73. This is not in order. Ideally, when we create the stem and leaf plot, we would like them to be ordered, with the lowest on the inside and the largest on the outside. So we'll just switch those two, two around. We'll put the 73 here and the 74 there. So that's how you read the information. That's a 78. That's a 74, that's a 73. These are the tens, these are the ones. Now let's show how to create a stem and leaf plot. We'll be using this piece, this set of data. You begin by creating your stem. So these are the tens digits. Now I simply start taking my numbers and recording them here. Now I will run into a challenge. I would like my end result to be ordered in order from lowest to highest. But these numbers are not in order. So sometimes you're gonna run into difficulty making sure your plot turns out nice and neat. Let me begin. This is 27. So indicate a 27, I'm gonna put a two I'm leaving a little bit of extra room because I see some, I've got at least another 20, and maybe if I had a much larger set of data, I'd want to leave some room just in case there were some 22s or 23s. So I've got that one in there. That's 27. Now we do my 36. Again, if I look at my set of data, I can see that I'm going to need some extra room. So I'm going to put a 6 about here. 54. I don't see any other 50s in my set. So I can actually put it right here. 47, I've got a couple of others. I'll leave some room just in case. 62, 27, it's a different number 27. This indicates that there are two 27s in this set of data. I need a 37, a 49, a four. I think that's the only single digit one in this set. Another 27, a 17, 41, a 43. See the problem I'm running into here? I'm running out of room. I have a 36. I have a 34. And I have a 33. Then I get a 39 and a 38. Now, if I had a much larger set of data, this might get pretty messy and I might need to redo it to make a nice, clean set of ordered data. This is often useful if I'm attempting to find the mode or the median when organizing a set of data. This is often also, and if you're kind of lazy and you don't want to write out all these numbers, a slightly quicker way of recording a very large set of numbers. That is how to both read and create a stem and leaf plot.